I sing 2D Lord Rights. With the new Rage being photo booths at weddings, I have stacks of tiny 2x6 inch little film strip photos that I absolutely adore but have no idea how to scrap. How would you put them on a layout? Glitter Girl, can you help I sing 2D Lord find some passion for film strip photos? Of course I can. In this last part of this mini series on Glitter Girl's Guide to Wedding Albums, I'm going to give you a few ideas for using those film strips that come from the reception and kind of breaking this down into two different types of ways to scrapbook it because there are the more classic looking black and white um, photo booth strips and in this case it's one with the bride and groom so I want to mix that with an, another bride and groom shot from the wedding but I also have those sorts that actually are quite bold and colorful and they don't involve the bride and groom so I'll show you a few ideas for using these which tend to be a little bit more pesky especially if they're in color because because the colors you wore to the wedding may not match the colors of the um, the wedding. It depends on if you're making this album for your own wedding or if it's uh, a wedding where you were the guest. So I'll come back to the colorful guest photos in a moment and start with some classic black and white photos of the bride and groom. So I have a photo taken of the bride and groom's first dance and then their strip in the photo booth as well. So. I'm going to go ahead and place this in an L shape and there are a couple of different ways that you could work with this pairing of photos. One is that in a photo like this where you have lots of open space, you can use this as an opportunity to overlap different elements. If you like a page that's more compact or if this photo strip were a smaller size, this is a slightly larger than, um, than average strip and it's actually about the same height as this print. So I just printed this photo at home to match the same size as the strip, so that wasn't coincidental, sorry. And if this were a little bit smaller, I think this would be a good place to overlap the two. But what I'm worried about is because this photo strip is quite big and the detail in it, this photo is, a, these photos are a lot sharper and, and than the softness of the first dance photo. I think this crowds this picture too much and takes your focus away. So I'm going to separate it. I could of course separate it in this direction, but the reason I don't like this direction is because this is in focus and these are in focus and you end up with blur in the middle. That rarely happens in composition when you when you're um, composing just a single photo, you tend to have the blur and uh, you tend to have the area that's in focus and everything going away from that blurs. And that tends to be what's pleasing to the eye. So if I bring this over to this side, now you can take in everything that's in focus in the photographs all in one space and the blur gently fades to the outside of the page. So I'm going to use this L shape and keep everything that's in focus here together. I do want to use that same color scheme that I've been using with the pinks and the browns and then just a little bit of green and I'll be using the same sorts of supplies. I'm using embellishments from the pier by Crate Paper. I have these flowers that I cut from a sheet of My Mind's Eye paper and this background is also from this same My Mind's Eye collection, Find Your Wings and Fly. I will say the B side to this, or the, the opposite side to this pattern paper is gorgeous, but it doesn't happen to match this wedding, but I'll just show it to you because it's so pretty. Lovely little floral um, print on a, an aqua polka dot background. So maybe something that if you like the pink chevron, you might want two sheets. And so I want to bring in some brown um, to go behind these photos before I start anything else. And then I'm going to place my embellishments and everything else over the top. The more that I create pages for the same album, the more I tend to come across little things that can help me with continuity throughout the project. So you may have noticed that on a few of the layouts I've made so far, the dark brown is brought in as a horizontal element that starts as a photo map. Here I'm going to use that same idea, but I've cut it to the size of um, the height of this photo, and I'm not going to go all the way up to the top of this photo because I think this will make a great spot for embellishment and I don't need more brown behind here. So I've just matted the two 
is so that they're nice and square and I'm going to trim this side to be even. One thing I did want to uh, mention before I start piling more things on top of the layout is if you have a photo booth strip that was printed at the wedding and then you're using photos that you're printing yourself to go along with them, one thing to pay attention to to make them look like they are really meant to go together is the margins of white on the print. It might be that your photo booth strip is printed edge to edge and doesn't have the white border around the edge. In that case, I would probably do the same with the photograph. Um, with the second photograph but if it does have a white border around the edge try to get the white border on your single photograph to be the same size and that will help them look like they're meant to go together even though you can tell that they're taken in a different style just placing this central on the page so that my margins either side are pretty much the same and then i can start to build in a little bit more color and embellishment i've started with three little groupings of the flowers from that My Mind's Eye paper and I've used this on other pages in the album. I, I'm certainly not using it on every page but having one or two pattern papers that kind of appear here and there is really a look that I love seeing as I turn the pages of an album. It kind of um, gives you a the same sort of effect as when there's a single piece of music that goes through a whole movie and it just appears here and there even though it's not playing all the time then you start to associate that um, motif and in in, mu in the music it's it's a, a motif that you hear but as you go through scrapbook it's a motif that you see so I want to bring in embellishment that's going to follow this L shape pattern and I want to figure out where I can place a triangle of embellishments that's going to keep everything here on the page. I do want to add a little bit more embellishment with my photos from the reception. I think these are the pages where I can have a little bit more fun. They don't need to be quite as elegant as the pages that are more formal and beautiful and flowing at the beginning of the album. So I like these to kind of have a mix of um, things that are still quite dressy but a little bit of more casual influence as I go along. So. I'm going to see where I can tuck these um, different florals to try to create a nice little triangle of where things can go. Now if you end up with pieces that aren't quite a perfect fit, don't worry too much because you can always cover up an edge here or there and if you bring in other pieces. So I'm thinking that I'll be layering several pieces here. It doesn't matter that I have this straight edge where this one was printed at the side of the piece of paper and because I can just add another layer that will cover that uh, piece there and it will be fine. So if I'm then creating an embellishment group here and an embellishment group here which I'm imagining will overlap on top of the photo then I have two options for my triangle. I can either bring something down here or I can bring something up here into the open space. I think at the moment I'll go ahead and work on those two corners first and then I'll see if um, which corner would be more natural and that way I can um, always add in something that's smaller that third embellishment cluster and not have to completely abandon my plans for two larger groupings so I'll go ahead and start with these I also want to bring in some of the slide frames from create paper and I um, I've used some of the paper frames from the ephemera collection already but I hadn't used these chipboard frames that come as their their own separate set it has absolutely tons of pieces of chipboard all in frames but these different little nested sizes and remember I started with that um, Polaroid cut apart sheet from one of the Dear Lizzie collections. So I'm thinking I'll bring that in. And the reason I wanted to bring in all these different photo frame elements is to emphasize the idea of the photo booth. And um, I think that's a great place to use things like camera and, and photo frame motifs because the, the act of getting the photo taken is part of the event. It's part of the fun. And I'm thinking the large one can actually overlap. Now I know that some of you are going to remember I said I didn't place the photos over here because I was worried it would crowd the picture too much. So I might be contradicting myself, contradicting myself a little bit, but I have a feeling that it will still work. And if you don't like how it looks, you can always keep it as a note to yourself that you will not do it the same way that I did because you'll know what works before you try it. So I'm thinking something like that. I also like these little ones for a photo strip because I can 
take the the um, slide frame and put it over the top and bring your attention to a certain detail. So in this case, I think the one that I want to frame is the one where they're holding up letters to say love. And I like that because they're, they're holding a frame themselves in the picture at the bottom of the strip, then I add a little frame at the top and I like how that brings it all together. So I'll be attaching those straight over the top, I believe. And I also want to make sure that when I'm using lots of squares and rectangles, I'd like to have a little bit of variety. So I'm going to bring in some circle die cuts as well. And this one is from Ellie's studio. So I'm thinking a little bit of a circle shape up here. And then obviously I'm going to need something to go across here where I have that, um, that edge. So I'm not completely sure on, on what's going to finish all these, these embellishments at this point, but I'm happy enough that I know something is going to work. So I'll go ahead and start adhering. To layer the stamps at the top of the page here, I've used two different brown ink pads. One that's a little bit lighter, a Distress Ink brown ink pad for and the, the layer that's flat on the page and then a darker solid color ink pad for the piece that's popped up and darker. That way I'm still using that element of the shades of brown in my color scheme that goes throughout the album. I um, also wanted to give you a little hint on making um, easy stamped pieces like this that you cut out and then are guaranteed to coordinate with your page, I'm actually using the empty spaces from that same piece of paper where I'm cutting out the flowers. And just by using brown ink over the top where you have that sort of image where you're stamping something solid and then the design is in the negative, that way the paper that you've been using will show through and it's guaranteed to match what you have. Really, really super simple. Now, I know that this grouping of embellishments needs a little bit of um, something with some movement, some little hearts dotted about or something like that, but with the major elements in place like this, I can then come back to my second um, group of embellishments and make sure that I can get that balanced and then I'll be able to add those little sprinkles of finishing touch to both of them and make them work. So I wanted to start with these three frames here um, at the bottom to make a grouping and I just want to layer them together without attaching them to the page to make sure that I can get the different pieces showing so that I don't cover up, um, for example, the cute little hearts and words on this paper frame. So I can layer that behind here before I attach it to the whole layout. And then I can do something similar here. And I need to decide, do I want to have it toward the right or the left and I like having it toward this side because then the empty space that's going to let the photo show through is connected here. I think if I place it over here having the photo show through on this side is a little bit too awkward and, and broken up for your eye to quickly understand what's what's on display there. So I'll group them like this and then I'm ready to stick them to the page. With those larger elements there, I can bring in some different pieces to make it coordinate and mix and match with this set up here. Instead of using another of the scalloped circle folded in half, I want to use something that has the same elements but a different shape. So this is from the same pack of embellishments but it's a pinwheel, but it still has the pink, the craft, and the gold glitter. And with a bit of luck, I can bring this into here and not cover up those cute little hearts and words that I worked on keeping visible. And I'll definitely want to bring at least one, if not both, of those stamps in as well. And I had this sat on my on my desk to remind me that I wanted to include this somewhere and I'm thinking this would probably be a good spot. It's a little badge for, from Ormolu that says love it and I just, the, the, the font that she uses on a lot of the Ormolu designs is really lovely and formal and looks nice with wedding themed elements even though it's not particularly a wedding collection. Different pieces that you could use on all sorts of different projects. So that way I have a circular element here, like I have a large circular element here. There's just two different kinds of elements, of course. And 
I can see what stamped pieces will go well in this grouping too. I want to make sure I have something that comes down a little bit more into this floral so that the flowers don't feel so disconnected from the embellishment. Using the All You Need Is Love stamp over the floral in the lighter of the two dark brown ink shades gives me something that's going to pull all this together. And I went ahead and repeated the snap stamp down here in this kind of grouping of three different shapes. Now I'm ready to add my title and just wanted to show you that when I'm using the same set of thickers over and over, um, I tend to end up with a little bit of empty space that makes it easy to um, lay out a title so that you can see what it looks like. It's especially handy if you need to start changing some letters. So this is my last lowercase r and if I want to use Mr. and Mrs. I need to come up with another lowercase r so in this case it's a U that's been um, cut into two pieces and turned upside down. So this way I can at least test it out and see what it's going to look like and see if it will be legible rather than getting to that point in my title and then realizing that I need to create a letter that I don't have and figuring it out as I go along. I want to add my title in here because the L shape of the page gives me that nice natural gap to put the photo. But I also want to um, add something that's just a little bit more delicate to bring in the title here and I have a doily stamp. This is from an older My Mind's Eye collection called Miss Caroline, but there are several different doily um, images in both stamp and sticker format. So this one, I'm just going to cut a piece of it away and then tuck it underneath. And I want to make sure that my flowers overlap so that it feels connected to everything rather than separate. Just tuck it underneath all those so now it should give me a nice clean spot to start my title and follow this horizontal line to space it out and bring the embellished bit of the page into the planar background and connect it all up together. I've added my journaling below the photos to um, mimic and, and frame with the title lettering above and the handwritten lettering below. But if you have lots of journaling, I would swap these two on the design and that gives you all this space here to write and you can place your title at the bottom of the photo and still have the same effect of the same design principle. Now, do you remember at the beginning, I thought that I might have a third area of embellishment and that I could come back once these two are done and go to either this corner to create a triangle in this direction or this corner to create a triangle here. Now what's happened here is that the L shape plus the two areas of embellishment top and bottom has created a triangle shape in its own so I could go ahead and follow that and add more embellishment to this bottom corner but I'm a little concerned that the more stuff I add right there the quicker it's going to get too busy and it's not going to be possible to take in all the photos. I think I prefer them with this area of breathing room so that the embellishment is just at the corners and there's all of this is just um, the photos without more stuff on top. So um, I'm not going to go down to that space and I think if I start to embellish this piece it's just going to fill up so much of the page that it's not going to have that breathing room on either side. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it as two areas of embellishment and the natural triangle shape that follows by using the photos in an L. Now I do want to emphasize this kind of loose line of embellishments and I want to bring in the motifs that I've been using throughout the whole book and that includes my little hearts and the splash of green in the color scheme. So I've used my um, Lawn Fawn heart die cut set or heart die set to cut a few of these green hearts with the polka dots that's the lawn fawn dies and then I can scatter them so that they flow across the page on this diagonal line. I think in this case I'm going to be erring toward the smaller pieces because if I show you the largest one that is quite 
big compared um, to all the other elements so I think I'm better staying with these smaller pieces and I think I might go ahead and cover up that red heart because that's distracting me a little bit so I'm just going to use brown ink around the edges to tone down the green and make it match with everything else and I'll put some of these on pop dots and some of them flat on the page but I'll just figure out where I want them to go and I think I have a couple gold sequins I can bring into that mix as well Here's this one all finished. Just to bring everything in line with the other pages in the album, I added a little bit of brown baker's twine to both groupings of embellishment and just the tiniest little sprinkle of pink uh, Mr. Huey mist to the top and bottom corners. Now that um, finishes off my page that includes the bride and groom in the photo booth. And I'll give you a quick little look at another page where the colors are peskier and it's guests instead of the bride and groom. So by comparison, my layout with shots of the guests in color is a lot less formal and probably simpler than the other pages I've created for the album, but I have kept some elements consistent because I'm planning to put this in a wedding album um, that's going to go with all those other pictures. So while there's definitely going to be a break when you get to the point where it's all photos of the guests and there'll be stylistic changes, I'm not going to change the entire um, look of everything. I'm just going to make it a little bit more casual for these fun reception pictures. Now, I do think it's worth keeping in mind that if you're going to just scrapbook um, these for your everyday albums rather than putting them in a formal wedding album, then use any style you want. There's no need to have to stick to something that, that's specific to a wedding. And I'll link up a few different examples of pages with strips from photo booths so you can get some different looks um, that don't have anything to do with the wedding side of everything. And then if you do want want to keep it within the album this section of the album will be a lot more forgiving but you'll still see that there are things that I've kept um, in common with the other pages I still have that same heart shaped die and I'm using that green paper with white polka dots um, this floral is something it's from American Crafts Mayberry and it's something that's in my kit to go on a variety of pages. I've used both the pink polka dot papers before, a different stamp from that same stamp set that I just used, some baker's twine, the same colors of mist that I'm using, and I just used this page as an opportunity to bring in a little bit more color so normally I wouldn't include the yellow but here I decided I could make it something that would form a triangle and have that little um, that little bit of extra color. I also wanted to make the title and journaling here a little less formal to go along with the reception and the thing that made this particular photo booth a little different was that all the other wedding photo booths I've been to the photo booth is set up in a corner of the reception hall but in this case it wasn't in the room at all it was a white taxi that when you stepped into the taxi the inside of the taxi was a photo booth so the car was actually outside and you had to go out to the car park or as you would say in North America the parking lot and um, to get to the photo booth so I liked the idea of keeping a title that was a little bit jokey and 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 really highlighted the fact that the this the, the unique part of this particular photo booth was how it was actually inside a car. Your challenge this week is to use a photo booth strip or a strip of photos that you put together yourself on a layout. Now, this episode brings Glitter Girl's Guide to Wedding Albums to a close, but if you pop over to Two Peas in a Bucket, and there's a link if you're watching on YouTube, you'll find a list of questions and answers for other wedding album questions that have been asked on the board, and I hope you find it useful. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.